guys, I read a book. Today, I want to talk about a concept that I've been living by for a while, but I finally read the book How to Be Everything by Emily Wapnick, who coined the term multipotentialite in their TED talk called Why Some of Us Don't Have One True Calling. I think I'll make this a two-part series, and today I will tell you about the book and what it means to be a multipotentialite. And in the second part, I will walk you through how multipotentiality manifests in my own life. Emily Wapnick studied music, film production and law and is a self-described author, speaker, coach, TV writer and astrologer. A multipotentialite, polymath, multipassionate, renaissance person, jack of all trades or generalist is someone with many interests and creative pursuits. If you've ever felt intimidated by the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or the grown up version, what do you do? This is the book for you. The full title of the book is How to Be Everything, a guide for those who still don't know what they want to be when they grow up. So you know when adults ask children, what do you want to be when you grow up? It doesn't really matter whether the child decides to be a rocket scientist or a bin man, what matters is that they choose one. If you say you want to be an engineer, an actor and a chef, you're likely to get laughed out the door. However, Emily claims that there are actually more multipotentialites than specialists in the world, which makes a lot of sense because when I think of my friends, most of them do a bunch of things in various capacities, but that might just be my little bubble. Traditionally, each degree points you to a specific career, but nowadays it is a lot more common to enter fields without any specific degree unless you're doing law or medicine. Emily wants the book to be a career resource for multipotentialites living in a world designed for specialists. To start off, they explore the idea of the jack of all trades stereotype and whether doing many things means you are mediocre in all of them. It doesn't, but read the book. They list out a number of superpowers that can make multipotentialites stand out in comparison to their specialist counterparts in their field including idea synthesis, adaptability, and rapid learning. Overall, the book provides practical advice on how to design a happy and financially comfortable life so that work feels like a supportive force in your life rather than something you have to get through to pay the bills. In order to do that, Emily lists three ingredients of a happy multipotentialite life, and they are money, meaning, and variety. While a specialist might find meaning and money in one career, multipotentialites need variety to be happy. I really loved the section on money as it helped me unravel a lot of toxic beliefs that many people, including me, hold. The idea is that you understand money as one ingredient and regardless of how much you have, if that's the only thing you have, it will never be enough. Now, everyone needs different amounts of money to fund their lifestyles and be happy, but if you never define how much you need, this can lead to a chronic sense of never having enough. Next up is meaning, and many multipotentialites will have one or more whys uniting their seemingly disparate interests. This is the idea of not putting all of your fulfillment eggs in one basket, and in a similar way as you would diversify your financial investments, it is healthy to get your fulfillment from a number of different sources. The aim is to find enough money and meaning overall, but the proportions will differ individually. The last one is variety and guidance on how to decide how much is right for you. Variety can come from different tasks within one single job, from an array of hobbies, or from different careers across your lifespan. In the next section, Emily describes the four multipotentialite work models. They are different constellations of where to find money, meaning, and variety, but as a reader, you are encouraged to mix and match different work models across your lifespan. This section contains a number of real-life examples of multipotentialites who use these different work models to help you understand the concepts. First up is the group hug approach, where you get your money, meaning, and variety from a single job where you get to wear many hats. This is usually in an interdisciplinary field. Next is the slash approach, which is where you switch between multiple part-time jobs or businesses on a regular basis. Emily emphasizes that this is not a temporary solution to pay the bills, but rather a solution to find variety within your work week. A combination of employed and self-employed often does well under this work model. Third is the Einstein approach, which is where you have a good enough job you shouldn't hate it, but you also don't have to give it your all. 
and then you pursue your different interests on the side. This takes off the pressure of monetizing all of your interests because you know you can comfortably live off of the income that you make in your main job. And last but not least, we have the Phoenix approach, where you dedicate yourself to a single career for a number of months, years or decades, and then you reinvent yourself completely and switch fields. A really good tool Emily mentions here is the loathing scale to decide when to leave a job or abandon a project. The loathing scale goes from 1 to 10, 1 being you're loving every minute and 10 being you're physically unable to think about going to work. The ideal time to leave is between 5 and 8 so that you avoid burning out too hard. This can manifest as boredom, a lack of challenge or loss of initiative to initiate projects. The work model chapter contains practical tips on how to make career transitions smoother and how to explore new passions before making the switch. The last section of the guide provides practical advice on dealing with common multi-potentialite stumbling blocks such as productivity, dealing with critics and insecurities. I loved the section on knowing when to quit. Emily makes the point that contrary to popular belief, multi-potentialites don't quit when things get too hard, they quit when things get too easy. There's this idea of your personal endpoint, which is just an awareness of when you've accomplished the goal and you got what you came for as compared to getting external recognition such as a degree certificate. I think this is really valuable because in today's world you can get most jobs with any degree and it is the knowledge that is more valuable rather than the piece of paper. A related concept is resistance, which is a more sudden feeling of excitement, panic and insecurity, such as when you experience imposter syndrome and want to quit immediately. This is actually a sign that you are still interested in the topic and should keep going. This chapter also contains great advice on how to answer the dreaded what do you do question and learning to talk about your many interests, which is something I am terrible at as well as advice on combating imposter syndrome and the discomfort of feeling like a beginner again and again. At the end of the book, there is a list of famous multi-potentialites and their respective careers, such as Maya Angelou, Steve Jobs and Benjamin Franklin, as well as a list of interdisciplinary fields that multi-potentialites might be interested in pursuing. There are also quite a few sources and further reading recommendations. And this is the fastest I've read a book in a very long time, so I'm quite excited to look into some of these recommended books and explore the different approaches to the concept of multipotentiality. So if you've enjoyed this, stay tuned. I will link the book in the description. Emily also runs a blog called pottylike.com and an amazing online community for multipotentialites called Pottyverse, where they and their team explore a lot of the same concepts, so I'll link those two. This has been a quick introduction to one of my favorite concepts and some of my favorite snippets from the book, and in the second part I will give you specific examples of how multipotentiality has manifested in my silly little life so far. See you in the next video! Bye bye